Well, hello and welcome. My name is Martin Veach. I'm contributing editor of Mining Magazine. It's going to be my pleasure to bring this special video report to you today. And that video report is going to be on the subject of tailings management, in particular, the all-conquering global industry standard on tailings management. It's having such a, a quite literally stratospheric impact on the, on the mining sector, uh, how we deal with tailings, how we bring in technology, how we uh, manage the whole process that touches on sustainability and so much more. Um, to help with this, I've got an, an, a great expert who's going to be uh, introducing the topic for us. His name is Eric Vlot. Eric, welcome. Nice to meet you, Martin, and thanks for uh, having me on the meeting. Oh, my pleasure. Eric is the Global Manager for Tailings and Backfill. Uh, we are Minerals. I mean, We are Minerals is just a, a legendary company. Uh, I, I'm based here in the, in the UK and been very familiar with the company for, for many years with its heritage all the way back to the steam age and Victorian age UK uh, in Glasgow and Liverpool, 150 years of history. And to this day, still doing uh, sterling work in, uh, in, in mining minerals operations and uh, technology these days as the world has changed since those steam age days. Eric, absolutely, first of all, absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a proud heritage, right? Um, Let's kick it off then, Eric. I mean, from your point of view, you get a bird's eye view of this. What would you say are the biggest challenges that companies are facing in meeting this huge new or incoming or emerging global standard? Yeah, so we have, we've looked at a couple of the aspects. And uh, certainly, if you look at the global industry standards for tailings management at present, it requires um, the entire management of a company and of a mining company to rethink what they need to do. So if you look at lower management, middle management needs to be involved, which was also there for the earlier standards. But certainly also senior management needs to be involved. And I think that that is a, a change that you see from other standards. You really want all management to be involved and the key stakeholders to be active. Um, another important aspect is that you will have an engineer of record for each TSF, which needs to be there. So if you just look at the sheer number of TSFs globally, one can understand that uh, resourcing the whole um, company structure around that is going to be a big task. So you need capable, trained resources, engineers from all over the world working on that. So that will be a big um, challenge going forward. Another challenge will be that, um, that you review what is the best possible deposition effort that you would have for a certain TSF. So I fully understand that people want to step away from the conventional tailings and it's very much scrutinized. And filter tailings is looking to be the best option going forward. And there are certainly very good um, uh, advantages on filter tailings. But what you can also see often is that from a capital expansion point of view and operational expansion point of view, that is also really, really um, contributing significantly to an increase in the, in the prices then, in the operating cost. So I think that by using a life cycle management approach to these, um, to these options, that you will have a much more balanced overview of what you can achieve. So life cycle management means you look at the capital uh, investment, you look at the operational costs, but you also balance it out by tailing storage facility risk, by carbon footprint, by global warming potential, by energy costs, by water costs. So you try to come with a more balanced view on what is the best possible solution for a customer. And, and then finally, I think in the digital space, there will be quite some challenges in how do you digitalize the whole tailings management? How, may, how do you make sure that you keep track on what's happening and that you can also prove to the public what you have been doing. So you will be held accountable for what you do and digitalization will play an important role in that whole atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, we'll come to digitalization and technology in just a second, but I, I totally concur. I mean, life cycle management and that whole cradle to grave holistic view of, of cost management and sustainability management also is so important rather than just saying, okay, we've applied filtration and job done. Um, let me ask you about technologies because obviously we have evolved to become a, a technology leader in the sector. What technologies would you say are most likely to assist in helping companies to meet this standard? Yeah, so we have a number of uh, technologies that you see uh, emerging. So we have existing uh, technologies, we have new technologies. To touch upon a couple of new technologies, uh, for example, I know that Anglo-American is developing hydraulic dewatered stacking. 
they do a lot of test work at the El Sudado uh, facility in uh, Chile. I know that also tech resources at Antamina in Peru is developing commingling, which is a combination of waste rock and tailings. So there, those are the new emerging ones that are being driven by the customers itself. Um, if you look at WEIR, what we are developing at this moment is a terraflowing technology where we combine the features of existing technology, but we put that in a different flow sheet. So um, for example, with the DE cyclones, uh, cycloning technology is available, but we have developed the DE cyclones, which um, comprise two dewatering steps in one and are um, especially suitable for coarse dewatering of tailings. So through using this technology and then through testing samples at WTC, which is the Weir Technical Center, we can combine cycloning technology and complement it, for example, with dewatering screening, with thickening technology, with uh, decanting technology, centrifuging technology, that means. So we can really rethink a flow sheet and we can see what we can do to reduce the tailings footprint or the water usage or the energy usage. But we also try to repurpose part of the tailings. For example, through this cycloning technology, by separating coarse and fine tails, where you can then use the coarse tailings to build them for dam construction. So um, we, are, we are really looking in, in redeveloping um, flow sheets and, and uh, where, we can, where we can use it. Yeah, you've, all, you've almost answered my next question, which was I was going to say, how can paste and thickened uh, tailings disposal play a role in, in safe and secure TSF operations? So um, especially if you look at thickened and paste tailings, um, it has been there for many decades. And also if you look back at Weir's history, we have been already working for more than 30 years in the whole thickening and paste uh, technology. One of the most important aspects is that you will make sure that if you dispose of thickened tailings, you will have no or minimal bleed water at the TSF. So this is a big difference with conventional tailings where you pump at lower concentrations and you allow that water to basically become free at the tailing storage facility and you need to pump it back. So with thickened and paste tailings, you don't want that. So the whole magic to paste tailings is um, um, thin layer, drying so you have a stable stack and um, through putting layer over layer you will have a more stable stack liquefaction potential is less but also the consequences of any liquefaction would be reduced um, through, through this whole concept uh, you can imagine that in a drier climates uh, thickened and paste tailings is a more viable option because the net uh, evaporation rate is higher but it is still very much a technology which is very much suitable for customers, for mining companies going forward. Yeah, um, we touched on digitalization earlier. I mean, it, digitalization touches everything, as Mark Andreessen famously said, software is eating the world. But what role, what role rather, will digitalization, do you feel, play in meeting this important standard? So I think that we will have in the digitalization space a, a, a couple of things that will emerge. So first of all, it is all about the digital storage. So um, recently we have introduced um, Sinotrax. We call that the Sinotrax model, which is the digital module on every machine in which we can monitor machine performance. So whether you have a centrifugal pump, a warm centrifugal pump, you have a KVEX cyclone, you have a geo positive displacement pump, you monitor what the machine is doing. But then at, at the moment, we use it for predictive maintenance, for predictive analytics. But if you put all these machines together into a flow sheet and you then look at the overall data, you can then translate in the data how the process is working. So um, first of all, you store all the digital data. And that means for quality purposes, for audit purposes, you can show the public that all the data is already stored and you can justify what you're doing. But by taking this holistic view, and uh, connecting all the data, later on developing a digital twin even, you can then even do predictions on your TSF um, operation and on your plant operation. And um, in the industry, there are already, you know, like um, 
I wouldn't call it rumors, but but people are saying if we really implement full digital twin technology, it should give us 30% savings on energy and on usage. So that is really a very, very um, good thing going forward. Um, finally, in the digital space, what you want to do, for example, with motion metrics, we look at the capability of what's happening on the machines, loading trucks and loading um, conveyor belts. But um, if you can combine that technology together with all sorting technology, you can also eliminate um, ore that is not really containing a lot of metal from being crushed in a circuit. So you do not, not only handle tailings on the, on the backside, but on the front side, you will eliminate the usage of, of um, let's say, energy to crush rock that is not even uh, you know, um, valuable for yourself. And in this way, you also try to transform the flow sheet. So I think there are, uh, you know, different aspects to digitalization that is um, that is being developed at, at present and which will contribute to the whole tailings management. Absolutely. One more very quickly. I've got literally about 10 or 15 seconds. What are you cooking up in the labs at the moment, uh, Weir? What's coming next? So um, certainly if you look at the trans uh, uh, transformational flow sheet, that is one of the things we are working on. We are pushing the envelope of our products and we want to make sure that we will transform a flow sheet, not only by tailings processing, by having the right products in tailings processing, but also on the front end, by making sure that you um, do uh, basically crush the ore up to such a stage that you can already remove the tailings earlier in the process, so you reduce energy. And finally, um, what we really want to do is we want to work together with customers to rethink the flow sheet. We want to reduce energy, water, footprint, and we want to repurpose part of the tails. And that is the biggest development that is going on at the moment. Eric, you've done a great job explaining a highly complex phenomenon. I want to thank you for your time. And I want to thank everyone who's tuned into this Mining Magazine special report in association with uh, We Are Minerals. We'll see you again very soon. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Martin. Thank you.